I wanted to talk maybe for just a couple minutes about um, what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Uh, if you're going to start your own thing, uh, if you want to work an entrepreneurial company, and then have Izzy talk about the same thing. I think the challenges of like making it on the field and then later going on and making it in life uh, and starting up companies, Izzy starting companies and has started companies as well. Uh, to me, I just want to share a little bit about that. Um, so. w one, I actually uh, grew up quite poor and started my first company, which was Mako, like in the dorm um, at the University of Miami. I was basically, you know, making like thirty dollars a week in grad school, uh, drawing comics for the paper. Had no idea what I was doing. Um, I think you have to have like an un, like an like a non-stoppable determination to sort of succeed. I think you have to have some vision of the future. I think that's the most important thing. You have to be creative and believe beyond all the crap that's in front of you. You have to have this vision in your mind. But just having the vision doesn't do it. You then have to like go work your ass off nonstop, probably a hundred million times harder than you think. But it's the ones that don't quit. Um, those are the successful entrepreneurs. Those are the people that make it on the field. Um, um, and ultimately, you do need a helping hand. Like, I wouldn't get anywhere if there weren't someone along the way that gives you a small break. Um, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to come here today, because you find people that are trying, they just need that little break. Um, and you hope that you can do that for someone just the way someone did that for you. And pe pe people keep doing it. So it's a big karmic thing. Uh, you, you know, the, uh, I think it's, it's you do positive good things in the world, and you don't hope for a reward. You just keep doing them, but I think it creates a nice energy. Um, and that's, that's one of the things I believe in. You also have to create a culture around you of like, you know, it's not just think positive and things will happen. Uh, think positive, work your ass off. Um, it helps to be a little bit smart. It helps to have um, people around you who are also willing to support and help. And then if you don't have those people around you, find them. Like, you know, starting a company here in Florida is about one of the hardest things to do because, you know, you go to Silicon Valley, you go to Boston, it's like a thousand times harder. But for me, it was like a badge of honor. Like, okay, stick it, I'm gonna do it here, I don't care. Um, and I think that's the, you have to have that crazy attitude. And I think that actually, like that will and drive is, is probably unstoppable. So I'm gonna let Izzy talk a little about the same will and drive. Yeah, I think, you know, 100%, I, I agree. And, and my journey, although it was through sports initially, was very, very similar, you know, I didn't want to play football. My boss, I was actually, I ran youth programs at the YMCA and my boss at that program said, hey, I'm starting a, a football program. I want you to play. I was 17 years old, late to be starting to play football. And I said, I don't want to play. I'm a basketball player. That was my dream. He said, please come on, play. I went and played. And the season came when at the end of the year, he actually called the pro province, like the state, and got me a tryout for the provincial team. He told me, hey, he was so excited. In one year, out the other, my mother, called her a week later, did Izzy tell you? She said no, she called me, she said, whether you like it or not, you're going to this tryout. I went down and I made the team, you know? At that same practice that day was the head coach of the University of Manitoba, I ended up playing there five years. And actually my fourth year I almost quit because in three years I only had played in five games. And I was frustrated and I was like, they don't even want me to play. My mother was like, listen, at the end of the day, an opportunity is gonna come. And there's two things, are you gonna see the opportunity, one, and will you be ready when that opportunity comes? So I didn't quit. Sure enough, that next year, the guy who started ahead of me was academically ineligible. So that gave me an opportunity to, to play. I was first team all Canadian. I made the all-star team that first year. And sure enough, like you said, the opportunity came and I made the team. A scout from the Cleveland Browns came to my, to my school to look at another player. He's a, a stud. This guy, Darnell Edwards, a great player. When he was leaving, he said, hey, is there anybody else we should look at? My coach was like, yeah, we got this one kid. You know, he's raw, he, he doesn't know, he hasn't played a lot of football, but he's, he can run and he's big. So his name was Yogi Jones, he stayed behind and watched me practice. He said, young man, you could play in the NFL. And just like that, I signed a free agent deal with the Cleveland Browns. And going, Cleveland. you're from Cle <laughs> yeah, Cleveland? Uh, you know, if you're a Browns fan, I'm sorry. I mean, hopefully they get better. But going into that camp, there's one thing that I was told, which, you know, speaks to what Ronnie spoke about, the entrepreneurial journey. At the end of the day, they told me, Izzy, as you go into this NFL camp, and I had like all the media, I'm the, fast, I'm the first Manitoba to play in the NFL, all the media was saying, you're not big enough, you're not fast enough, he'll never make it, he'll be back in Canada. And he said, go into this, go into this camp and be the standard. So work harder than everybody else, come first in every drill, lift, I mean, know everything, know what to do, more importantly, do what you know. And, and that will set you apart. And at the end of the day, they can't cut the standard. And I went on forward. Thankfully, I played 11 years in the NFL. Early in my career, I had someone tell me, you know, 
sport is short. Before you know it, your career is over. And the mistake a lot of guys make, they don't plan for life after football. That's why you hear all these nightmare stories about guys losing everything. So a mentor told me, develop sustainable business before your career is over. So I bought a manufacturing business, which is the core of my business today. If you've ever gone to a church and if, you had, if you've had a pre-filled communion cup with the juice in it, with the wafer and the tab, that's my company. You know, um, that we, thank you, thank you. You know, so we, we purchased that company in 2009 and number one thing as an entrepreneur is vision. You know, you have to have a clear, unwavering vision for what you want to build, what you're looking to achieve and most of the time, your team and the people around you will not understand or not necessarily see all that vision. But it's important that those people, I don't get what you're doing, but I'm all in. You know, that they believe in your vision for what you're trying to build. And then secondly, he spoke about just the working, like, relentless and giving everything you have. 2009 to 2010, we did not sell a single communion cup. None, none. I couldn't sell, like I couldn't give a cup away. And we had all types of machines because I don't come from a manufacturing business. But I was focused on learning the business. I was focused on learning, you know, how to transition, you know, from where I was. And today we're, we're the lead manufacturer and distributor, distributor of the product globally. We just shipped 100,000 cups to Zimbabwe and we're, we're growing globally. But that resilience, despite the challenge, which is going to be there, is key to that entrepreneurial path. And, and then a big thing for me is always goal setting. You know, so I have like these huge goals of what we want to do, you know, from Blessed, which is the Communion Cups. I'm also a part of a, a tech platform called Ask the Doctor that's looking to globalize healthcare. And, and we have this big, long-term plans, but al also we have these micro goals that allow you to feel a, a win every day or a win every week and to allow the team to be consistently motivated. And I think that's a big part of sustaining or persevering through those challenges, having those little wins that you can internally be motivated about and also to motivate your team and the people around you. I just wanted to um, share a, a final thought and then pass it to Izzy to share his final thoughts. So um, this is really for um, all the, all the everyone here who wants to be in technology or start a company or is trying to get to the next level. Uh, it's going to sound really odd, but um, I think of it as a, it's really a spiritual journey. What I mean by that is you need to find that inner thing that you are here to do. It like, takes a lot of soul searching and it needs to be like, you know, I'm a big Star Wars geek. So, you know, are you going Jedi or are you going Sith? And I think that's a really confusing people. But, you know, you, you could fight your journey could go Sith and that's not good. So, um, I, I think if you go down the Jedi path, it's harder. Um, it's a hundred times harder, but um, if you go there and you stick to it, you have to first of all just say, I'm going there. And you'll be amazed at when you finally say that's the direction you're taking. It's not that there won't be a million and one obstacles, but there will be, if you're determined, I, I do think like the world opens up for you. Um, and it's, and it's, that's why it's, it's a struggle, it is a spiritual journey. And I think if you're aiming at the right thing, you have to in your heart believe you're doing the right thing. And I think it has to be the right thing. Um, you know, the, the world will open up, you will find a friend and you'll get that hand. Um, but you have to not quit. I think when you give up and get frustrated and you lose vision, you lose your dream and you just sit down and say, I'm just going to give up. That's like the worst. Um, and there's also shortcuts. Like I'm just going to go dark side. I'm going to go Sith. I'm going to, you know, there's short, there are no shortcuts, you know, but I think when you go the right way, um, you know, I call it wandering the desert. You got to be like Moses going off into the desert believing that you'll get help, and, and I think it happens. Beautiful, and, and I think my, my final thought would be just to the, you know, the magic of opportunities, and, and that being at the end of the day, you know, as I said earlier, the talent is out there, and there's a lot of incredibly talented young men and young women out there, and with a company like Magic Leap, and, and what they're uh, embarking upon, and what they're doing, and, and how they're growing, it's extremely special, and within the company, there will be uh, just a plethora of opportunities for people that are on multiple levels as far as their growth in what they do or what they excel at. And I think ultimately the magic in opportunities is that an opportunity without question always brings more opportunities and always brings more growth and the doors just continue to open. Uh, so to the young men and women and to the people in this room, to the people you know, you know, you look through your network, every individual in this room, as you kind of think to the people in your network that 
you know, with what's happening at Magic Leap, you know, as a company, Magic Leap can't find everybody. You know, so it's important that you reach out to those people that you know and say, hey, you know, uh, look into this, you know, or work on this skill, work on these gifts yourself, and, and you know, uh, look to get involved somehow, some way, and, and you never know. You just never know where that opportunity will take you. You never know where that, that first step will take you and what it could ultimately grow into 10, 15, 20 years later. You look back like, wow, I, I took interest in this and look at me today. So just uh, on, on behalf of Ronnie and I and, and Magic Leap, thank you guys for, for your time.